The Miju M2 is a 4G capable device, with both SIM slots capable of supporting LTE connectivity. If you choose to use the hybrid slot for expandable storage, you can insert up to a 128GB micro SD card. Apart from these features, the device has 2GB of RAM, a 2500 mAh battery, and runs on a MediaTek MT6735 SoC. This is a 1.3 GHz quad-core SoC with a Mali T720 Northern Marian Islands 2 GPU, and is commonly seen on devices in this price range. The M2 runs on Flum 4.5 OS, a highly customized skin based on Android 5.1. It bears very little aesthetic resemblance to stock Android, and changes a lot about how the system operates. While innovation in software is admirable, and should be encouraged to help set devices apart, we can't help but feel that Flum OS changes things only for the sake of being different. A lot of these tweaks seem unnecessary to us, and only serve to complicate the user experience in our opinion. The most significant change in Flum is the lack of the three Android soft keys. Instead, the device has only one physical home key, which can be tapped or pressed for either back or home respectively. In order to access the app switcher, you need to swipe upwards from the bottom of the screen, avoiding the home key. The notifications and quick settings menu are accessed via a typical swipe down from the top. However, unlike with other skins, a two-finger swipe will not directly bring down the shortcuts list, and it's among the least intuitive notification drawers we've used. The settings menu is also complicated by a two-layered interface, which we didn't like the look and feel of, while a couple of the pre-installed apps seem designed only for China, and can neither be used in India nor uninstalled. We feel that all of these changes are unnecessary and needlessly turn what should have been a straightforward user interface into one that's rather messy. The Miju M2 is a budget device, and features the MediaTek MT6735 SoC, which is popular in this price range. It ensures decent performance in most day-to-day -day activities, as well as some high-intensity tasks such as gaming. The level of performance that we got from the M2 was suitably smooth and more or less on par with other similarly priced devices. The phone also did well with our test videos, running all of them well including the ones encoded at a high bit rate. Angry Birds 2 and Dead Trigger 2 both produced some heat at the back of the device, as well as heavy battery drain, but the build and materials used ensured that it cooled down quickly. The phone is usually snappy when navigating around the interface and basic apps, although we did find certain apps, such as the camera and browser to be occasionally slow to load and process commands. Battery life was average for a device in this price range with the phone running for just under 9 hours in our video loop test. In day-to-day -day use, the Miju M2 will run for a full day under moderate usage conditions. Most basic users will be satisfied with the performance of the Miju M2 for their smartphone requirements. Miju is well established in China, but is an absolute newcomer in India with a long way to go before becoming a serious player here. The Miju M2 is a good-looking device, that performs well for the price and comes with 4G capability, so the company definitely has the potential to do well in India with the M2. However, the Snapdeal exclusive device is only available through flash sales which require prior registration, so it might be a bit harder to procure than a lot of its competition. The device is not without its flaws. It has a complicated user interface that is different for no good reason, and a camera that takes only average pictures at best. It's best suited to basic users, who have some experience with smartphones and Android in general. First-time smartphone adopters would do better with a less complicated device. However, if you're looking for good looks and decent performance, the Miju M2 is a great option in the budget category.